This is a CH552G chip. I've got five volts coming in here via this mini USB. And if I touch this wire, it slow blinks. And if I touch this wire, it fast blinks. And if I touch and hold, nothing happens. And it goes back to slow blinking again. And if I wait for 15 seconds, the blinking will stop and we can start the whole thing over again. This is a very, very useful chip with a lot of capacity for a very, very low cost. So we'll dive in a little bit deeper on this one. Let's start with the familiar, uh, a knockoff of an Arduino Uno. So we have our Atmega 328P chip here, external crystal, lots of other lovely bits and pieces. And this chip here is a CH340. Okay, so that's a USB to serial uh, chip. And I, initially when I started working with Arduinos, it caused somewhat of a problem because you had to go to a Chinese website, download some firmware, everything was in Chinese, hook it up to your computer and hope for the best. And after a bit of uh, mucking around, it did work. Um, I'm not sure what the Windows experience was like. Eventually it became a lot easier on Linux because the driver for the CH340 was included in the kernel. And so it all became very easy, probably about, I don't know, four or five years ago, I guess. So I guess what it really does is, if you think about how do I program this at Mega 328, you do have some in-circuit serial programming pins at the end. Uh, so you can hook up a USB ASP to this, and you can program your Atmega 328. But of course, most of us don't do that. It's a lot easier just to connect up to the USB connection straight to the computer, and then we have this chip, the wonderful CH340, doing the, um, the communication between these two. Uh, this is the company that makes them. It's the Nanching Quin Heng Microelectronics Company, and there's their website. So uh, feel free to go along and have a look. But um, not only do they make this chip, which has been around for quite some time, but they also make a whole series uh, which is based on, well, it seems to be very similar. So this is the CH552G, uh, but there are, there are also CH. 551s, 554s, 559s, 557s, and so on. I think I'll be busy for a while. I've just drilled down, though, into the CH552G. And uh, what we've got, and I've written it down because there's a lot on offer here. So uh, we've got, firstly, 16K of flash, 1K of XRAM, 256 bytes of IRAM, and 128 bytes of data flash. Presumably, I guess that's EEPROM. Uh, haven't really got down that far yet. It has a 2K bootloader, which is an interesting one. Um, it sort of takes a little while to understand how this thing can be programmed. When it arrives, there's no bootloader on it. Um, but I'll get into that. Uh, I'll take you through the code and how I was able to access this as we go through. But it does have a 2K bootloader on it. Um, there is um, uh, programming via the uh, USB. So that is your um, serial programming via USB. And that's actually built in. Um, so that's that's why it looks very similar to the, uh, the, the uh, CH340. Um, it's doing the, uh, the, the communication in-house, if you like. There's no separate chip here. What else have we got? We've got three timers, two PWM channels, uh, full duplex UART, uh, UART or UART. <laughs> You are an SBI interface. Five now. This is one I was interested in. Five channel touch detection. I've never really played around with that, and I've got an exclamation mark because I think that sounds a little bit of fun. I think it's up to fifteen touch keys if you configure this correctly. Um, this is a bit of a mess because I've actually said six, which I think is in the in the um, parts of the data sheet, but it's five really. The data sheet is interesting because um, for a long time it was just in Chinese, but there is an English version available now. So I'll put that on the uh, I'll put the link on the blog. 25 megahertz clock and PLL, built-in voltage regulator, exclamation mark, because again, if you go back to the uh, to the Uno, we have our voltage regulator um, here, 
which is I think is an AMS uh, one or triple one seven, um, and presumably that's your, your five volt linear regulator. This one here is um, is built in, which is, again is a little astonishing. That's only five volt to three point three, but still that's that's pretty good. Uh, it's also got sleep modes, um, interrupt detection, a whole swag of things. So I'll again. Um, probably at some stage put up a graphic here, but also we really just need to dive into the documentation to find out what it's capable of. They're coming into the country at the moment um, for around about, well, it's certainly sub $2 for the entire unit. I think it's actually around maybe three at the moment. So it's certainly, of course, like everything else on the upswing, but you still can get the raw chips, which I've got coming in too. And considering that most of the stuff is built in, you don't need an awful lot, as you can see from this board, to get it going. So I'm looking forward to those coming and having a bit of a play. But anyway, let's hit the uh, the IDE to find out how to flash a bootloader, get access to this chip and program it. All right, so I'm just gonna talk about this in terms of uh, two processes. One is, how do you talk to this guy? Well, I'm using Linux, so your mileage is gonna vary if you're on another operating system. But I actually documented as I went along all the problem which I call fixes. So let's have a look at them. Uh, so firstly, you need to go to your Arduino preferences. So for instance, behind here, I've just got Arduino. So here's my preferences. And then you can see down here that I've got a link to this particular page. Uh, and so that's where you find the boards managing uh, or the, the uh, boards preferences uh, for the board manager. Uh, and I've got a link here as well, which I'll put in the blog too. Um, and then the actual settings, uh, which uh, I've used for the uh, programming is, uh, firstly, selecting the CH522 board. There's my USB setting is just default. Upload method, method is just USB. Um, the clock source is just 24. I haven't really changed this at all. It's recognized. Now, it may not be recognized to start with, so um, that's something which I'll uh, talk about as well. And uh, and there's no program available for this board. So once you've got that, uh, you push in the uh, the button. Uh, sorry, no, no button. So the first time you load, uh, there's no button. If you push in the USB and type in LSUSB, this is on Linux, then you'll get this. It's an, it's recognized as an NXP ARM embed. Then if you press the button and push in the USB and, and type the same thing, LSUSB, then it comes up as Win Chiphead. Uh, and then on Linux, you need to give permissions to the USB. Uh, and you can do that uh, in a number of different ways. If you um, have a look at the device and find out where it is, then you can um, you can go into pseudo mode and immediately you can change the permissions for that device. If you want to do it more permanently, then you go to the uh, etc. You dev rules blah blah blah, and you add in uh, this line, and then the um, the five five ee and the uh, the 4348 is taken from uh, this line here when it's uh, when it's first initialized uh, and then uh, you just uh, reload those uh, those rules and uh, trigger and then you might need to add use it to dial out because I've got the group dialer here you could change it to whatever you want and then finally, uh, if you go no button and push in the USB and LSUSB, then you get this generic uh, CH55 uh, Xduino. And, uh, and then I've got programs, no worries each time. In other words, you don't have to push a button next time you want to program it. It's, the bootloader has been loaded and it's all fine. Uh, then I've just got some specs on it, um, which you've seen before, and that is about it. So um, the program itself, uh, is interesting. Uh, so I've borrowed uh, pretty heavily from a few different sources here. Uh, when you load this up, you'll find it under examples. And then if you go to, oh, examples for CH552 board. So there it is. Uh, so they've got some generic examples. There's a lot to explore here, which I'm, I'm looking forward to. 
one of them is the touch key example and then there's actually a uh, touch key tune parameters so you can figure out you know how you want it to react to for instance things like the sensitivity and the threshold and so forth but i just use the touch key example and i copied uh, and pasted and then adapted the code uh, so you're going to need to include this touch key dot h and then this is how i've done it so i haven't dive deep into how to get the interrupts working so instead i created this thing which is sort of like fake uh, multitasking so we just keep a track of the time since it was touched uh, whether it was touched fast or touched slow and how long since that was done and then uh, what is the current time and then then when we do this sort of fake multitasking, we just check in with these variables. And I've just got a turn off time here of um, 15 seconds, but of course you can adapt all of this. Uh, I've got a bool in here to say, has it been touched? Um, so we can branch off depending on whether that's going. And I've got some, some timing here. So I've said, okay, uh, if the slow flashing is gonna be every uh, half a second and the fast flashing is gonna be every 10th of a second. And then a couple of booleans here. So it says, um, uh, is the slow LED lit or not? Is the fast LED lit or not? Are we using the fast uh, LED? Are we using the slow LED? And so on. I've got my slow LED on pin 30 and my fast LED on pin 11. Setup's pretty standard. Um, just saying that the slow LED and the fast LED are output and I set them both to low. Now the setup for the touch key, and I've just put a couple of delays in it. I don't know why. You don't, probably don't need to, but I've um, I've just got two touch keys actually enabled, and that is the one that's on um, pin fourteen and the one that's on pin fifteen, also called one point four and one point five. Um, and then uh, I've got a function here which I've set called check touch, so this will just keep being uh, enabled, and basically. Uh, it's got has it been touched and then also have you stopped touching it so this is almost like um, uh, button debouncing so it basically says uh, let's look at see if we've got a touch and then we'll say what touch was that so it gets the key and then it, it just goes into this uh, routine where it says look write everything low so turn off the LEDs and stop touching the wire so it'll say <laughs> It'll just keep going around and around and around until you let go. And of course, what's returned is any touch, not stop touch. So whatever you end up touching doesn't matter. It's the first one that you touch. You can, you know, rewrite this how you want, but that's how I wrote it. Uh, and then we've got, um, what have we got? Okay, so now we've got the loop. So the loop is um, we firstly check touch so the very first thing we do is to see is the wire being touched and we set the current time then it says if um, we have been touched then we um, we set that touch time so we know how long it's been touched since and if it's um, the fast touch then we will we, we, we set the booleans we're using fast uh, but we're not using slow we'll set the uh, initially we'll set the fast led uh, to high and we'll set the the low LED to low uh, we'll uh, set the timer for the fast one and and then we'll say the slow status is false in other words the slow light is off the LED is off and the fast status is true and we reset the no touch to zero we do exactly the same thing but in reverse for the slow touch so everything's pretty much the same except this time it's the slow light now let's assuming nothing was touched, what actually happens? So we check to see that the current time subtracting the touch time, which is your 15 seconds, is, uh, sorry, the, the current time subtract when it was last touched is less than 15 seconds. And if so, it'll blink. So it blinks on and off, depending on whether the, uh, the time for the blinking has been exceeded or not. So the fast time is 100 milliseconds. And then down here, the slow time is 500 milliseconds. I'll post all of this code on the blog so you can go through it. Um, it shows you not just how to use the CH552, but also I think it's a nice little illustration of um, the idea of using an Arduino or, well, in this case, it's um, uh, the CH552, any processor really, where you can sort of fake multitask. It's not multitasking, but uh, things only trigger when certain timing events happen. 
And then eventually, if we exceed our 15 seconds and there's been no touch, everything is um, is written low. So the fast LED is written low, the slow LED is written low, and then we say, um, you know, everything is off. And it'll just go through. And so it goes through that loop reasonably uh, quickly and just checks the timing and then things are enacted uh, depending on what uh, happens. So let's um, compile this and uh, upload it so you can see how that works. That's all pretty straightforward. Um, we've ended up with uh, how many bytes? Looks like 6259 bytes. So that is about mm, just under half the uh, the capacity. As it says here, 44%. Um, yeah, so that's all pretty straightforward. Let's, uh, let's see it in action again. So after all that uh, programming, um, this is the result. So I haven't played around at all with any of the variables associated with the, uh, the capacitance itself, threshold values, sensitivities, any of that sort of thing. Um, but uh, there's a lot that you can do with the, uh, with the uh, capacitance channel. So that's a pretty amazing piece of kit, I think. I think I will call that the circuit working for this week. And uh, we'll see you next time.